like what's our cultural problem? What's our what's our cultural problem and then what is the solution to getting into that mode because and trusting that. I think it's I think it's not even about trusting it as much cuz I think once you see it you see it, but how do we keep ourselves in that mode cuz even though I can repeat these kinds of things to you in awareness, there's something in my brain. I don't know if I'm just too high beta state at times and whatever it is, but where, how do we get down to that state where we are allowing and flowing and one with the universe instead of constantly pushing against it. It's really is, I didn't realize what I was doing when I was doing it. These days I understand what I was doing and, and, and I, it, I have practiced um, very deliberately to surrender and let go. And, and so that is what I do constantly, constantly, constantly. Back then, I don't know how I did it, but I would just cut. I just had such faith in the universe because that was the way that I described it. And I, I had set the biggest intentions for the secret. And I just knew that everything would happen for us. So we're very much in the flow. And if we were not, we stopped and we were, and we just walked away until we felt good. We came back and, and would continue working when we felt good. When I didn't feel good, I would not answer the phone. I would not open my computer. I would not do any of those things because if you're on a really bad frequency and you open up your computer, in comes a whole lot of problems. And so on the same frequency, so I just wouldn't open my computer and I uh, wouldn't answer my phone until I would until I could feel a whole lot better. And so that was very deliberate way that I did it then. These days. Is very different. I don't have such a personal attachment to I am doing this, you know, with the universe. The universe is doing this for me. I am the universe, kind of one with the universe. And so I, I am just in the complete state of allowing, surrendering, letting go, because we are the ones that need to get out of the way. Because everything that will be given to us, that will happen for us, is way beyond what we could even imagine for ourselves. I could imagine it, I'd be striving for it. But when you let go of your own idea of how something could go, you're now open to the quantum field of all potentiality that goes far, far beyond what our imagination has even conceived, experienced, seen, or caught a glimpse of. Exactly, exactly, because all we can imagine is the mind, and the mind is tends to be a recycling machine. And then, as you say, in the quantum area or beyond the mind is every single possibility, unlimited possibilities. And so... Yeah, I just keep surrendering to all of that. And the less we put ourselves in the way with our fixed ideas and opinions and all of those things, you know, and we, we kind of get those out of the way, the more magnificent our life becomes absolutely magnificent. I've found that the human experience is challenging because... It takes experiences, patterns, relationships, friendships, family. It takes all these dynamics that push on us to see ourselves, And it's hard to see yourself. And so how did you get to that point where you could kind of release and surrender and get to that point? I, I, did you have, did you process anything about childhood? Was there anything about your upbringing, something about family, something about your own patterning? Or were you able to just not have to go there and access this potentiality with the simple awareness of the secret? Right. I saw um, in 216, I had a revelation of who we really are. And so that is what really changed everything. Um, 
And and even I think in the sacred, I would refer, we are the infinite being, you know, I would say it in the sacred. And, and I definitely believe that, felt that, um, knew that. It's just that in 216, I had the experience of it. And so I realized then that the person is absolutely the smallest, smallest, tiniest part of us. And so basically, I just spent my time releasing any negativity that arises, any memories that arise, because I know that any negativity that appears or that, that it, that somebody else triggers with negative feelings or negative thoughts, any, um, uh, any memories appear because they're ready to be released from our life. That's why they're appearing. They're ready to be free. And so I know those things are inside of us, held in our subconscious mind. And when they appear, they're ready to be free. So I learned how to release them really quickly. And, and it, it applies to everything that you, you, everything negative, everything that we consider negative. But I only release the things that appear. And, uh, and if, if, if a negative feeling comes along, like, like agitation or disappointment, like I would get so excited because it would mean I could release it. And in the releasing of it, once you've released it all, you'll never feel it again. Like there isn't anybody that can aggravate you in the outside world. The only reason they can aggravate you is because you have it inside you ready to be released, right? Which you know very well. So, um, so I just kept releasing and releasing. And what I found was the more I released, the happier I got. And so then I would see things like I had beliefs that didn't serve me and I would just release the beliefs that didn't serve me. And Oh my gosh, then. That's beautiful and not overwhelming. Not at all. You know, because yeah. in my mind, I think, oh man, get through all the trauma, like heal no. all the things, like, you know, of ancestral things, like dig <laughs> in, but yeah. right? Like, how do I get to that? <laughs> the way you're describing it, and, and this is, I think, one of your many gifts is to put things simply so it can be comprehended and understood, is that just when it comes up, you deal with it. So, of course, I'm curious, what was that thing that happened in 2016? I, I, um, I had another kind of uh, um, moment. <laughs> um, I had another moment. I had a, a circumstance happen with a house that I was selling and it ended up that I felt this. It fell through really quickly and um, after I'd made all these plans to kind of move out in a week and... I felt this incredible disappointment in my body and I was just like, how could I feel something like this when I always feel so good? I just didn't understand it. And so what I what I did was I just decided I wanted to watch something spiritual. I didn't want this feeling. And so I just wanted to watch something spiritual so the feeling would go away. And I turned on my computer and Conscious TV and they were interviewing a man called David Bingham who's just an everyday person like you and me, not a teacher or anything like that. And he talked about how he saw the truth and became free. And I was like, the truth. And I followed in his footsteps and did what he did, which he listened to a podcast and by a man called John Wheeler. I listened to that podcast and, do you know, it's really interesting because I watched the Conscious TV interview with him several times. I listened to the podcast multiple times. And then I reached out to David to speak to him. And this was over a period of uh, three or so days. And then when I spoke to David, um, he sort of did an experiment with me where he showed me the, the, my mind focusing and what's there if my mind isn't focusing, what's behind my mind and has been there the entire time for my whole life. Yeah. And it was, I was just, wow. 
And David said to me, you'd already seen it before we got on the phone. And I said, had I really? And he, and he said, yes, but all I know is those few things, and I saw who I was from my own experience, the unlimitedness of who we are, and that there are no boundaries. And, and so everything changed again, massively, the way I see the world and second huge step to freedom. <laughs> right. Well, it's just our perception uh -huh. that colors our world. We, it's not always nice. Sometimes we have things that happen to us. We have mm -hmm. patterning from parents, patterning from friends and in growing up in environment, television. Um, we have all kinds of different things that give us a perception. And again, since it's so hard to see ourselves, it's like you have to have these moments, right? Where you go, oh, so what is the letting go process then? So the technique to help release things, and I keep working on it all of the time because, um, in fact, I just said to my daughter, I have to find a simpler way of saying this. Uh, I, I just want it to be simpler. And I've covered it in my book, The Greatest Secret, but I still... Like I'm always looking for simpler, simpler, simpler ways. So one of the things just to understand so people can get the feeling is one of the things that we do is we resist all the way along in our life. We resist when something happens that we don't want to happen. And I don't want that, we resist. And so we, we're kind of... Um, enjoying the, like the things we like, but the things we don't like, we're like pushing them away, including sure. including people or a comment that somebody makes. We don't like that comment and it affects us. And so, um, and so that's all resistance. And resistance is what causes all the negative feelings and contractions inside of us. And so what releasing does is it stops us from resisting. And so it, if a negative subject arises, a negative memory, a negative feeling, it is because we have just resisted. And so to counteract that resisting and stop that resisting, we do the opposite to resisting. And so what we do is like, I could say just like relax, but I say welcome it. Welcome the feeling, welcome the, the memory, welcome the thought and it's really just that we we don't try and fix it we don't try and change it we don't try and make it go away we don't try and do anything to it we just allow it to be there and in the allowing of it to be there we stop resisting and it just the energy just evaporates and very often you can feel the energy unwinding in your chest it's just an automatic cleansing system in our body the moment we stop resisting everything unwinds and so you could just do this if if nothing appeared you could just be really relaxed and just allowing of everything to be just the way it is right now and so to be very present as well of course helps to do that and then if all the energy that is trapped just begins to unwind and be released and why we don't need to go through picking one trauma one memory after another is because that many of them attach like a train with carriages. And so we can get one and it just pulls a whole train of carriages oh, out at the same time. That's overwhelming. And takes a, whole, takes a whole lot of memories with it. And so we don't need to go through anything one by one. or We just need to see the ones that appear, the ones that are triggered, the you know, the feelings that are, that are triggered by an out, outside event. I know that you talked about mirroring and, and that's what's so beautiful is that, I mean, I can use the universe as, as an example. We'll use people, circumstances and events. It will use all of those things to show us what needs to be released. <music>